Hello, all wonderful people out there. This is Kevin from Stacy Pipe, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. And today we are going to be a bit brave and step ever so slightly outside of the Adobe world and involve ourselves in some Microsoft Word and uh, potentially a better way of working with formatting for Word into InDesign. And, uh, you know, imagine the scenario you have received a uh, your copy for an article to design and you lay everything out, format it and make it look nice. And when you're done, you receive a completely revised version of the text and you need to paste it in and redo all the formatting, all your page breaks and special InDesign characters. And what if I told you it could be a lot easier? Well, instead of just pasting in text in InDesign, we can import it and done right automatically get the correct formatting. And if we want, even have a live link to the Word file for continuous changes. So why not uh, take a look at how to do this? Admittedly, this does require some synergy with your copywriter. And my best tip is for you to make a perhaps Word template for them to use and uh, go over with them why they should use it as well. And uh, but still, that means that this won't be for every project, perhaps. Let's start, however, in Word. And up here is Word's equivalent to styles. And I have not only made my own here, but I've also hidden the huge pile of other stuff that's usually here. And uh, we're not going to make this a Word tutorial, but if we click here, we get the style panel. And by clicking here on the plus, we can then make new styles. And then depending on how we do this, it may not end up mattering at all how these styles are set up as long as we know what they are called and uh, which you'll see in a second. And uh, so if we take a look at the text I have here, you should be able to see that they are using these styles. And I even have a character style for bolding items here. Now let's see how to use this in InDesign. Great. Here's my document and I have two linked text boxes all set up for the text. And uh, there are also some styles here with uh, which most of them should be pretty familiar from earlier. And uh, this step is optional. But if we want to work with a live linked word file, we go to the settings, then file handling and check the uh, create links when placing text and spreadsheet files. And uh, that's, we all, that's all we need to do for that. Next, to import your design, we use place, which is control D and uh, select a word file, of course. And very importantly, we need to check the import options box and uh, then just open. Then we get this panel where we get to decide what to do with our word document. And uh, there are presets, which I have made some and uh, some specific options as well. That should be quite self-explanatory. You probably know whether you want to include footnotes or not for example. And uh, however, under formatting is where the magic happens. And there are three ways of doing this. We can import without formatting, which will give us just that. Uh, however, that isn't perhaps why you'd want to use this method. But next, we can choose to instead preserve formatting by clicking here. And uh, once again, we have some specific settings, but the main ones are these two right here. First, we can import styles automatically, which will rely on the names being the same. And we can see that there are five conflicts, uh, i.e. five styles with the same name. For those, we want to use our InDesign style, not redefine them from Word. So we choose to do that. And if we now press OK and uh, paste it in the text box, we get this. And indeed, we have a lot of formatting applied. The heading is using H1. We have H2 and byliner, but the body text didn't end up working properly. And uh, that's because that one didn't have the same name in Word. So instead we got the Word style imported, which you can see here. To get around this, we can instead use the second option that will give us the most control. First, let's undo this and uh, delete this style that we got. Now let's try this again. We place and uh, open, of course. And now we are going to use customize style import and uh, click on style mapping. Here's a list of all the word styles. And mind you, there are some in here that aren't in use, so we can basically ignore those. But these are already set up correctly since I have my preset. But what we want to do is to define which InDesign style should be used for each word style. So H1 will use H1, Byliner will use Byliner, and uh, br text will use a body, which caused us some problem last time. 
and uh, the non-relevant ones I've just set to no paragraph style. And if we now press OK and paste this again, we should get all the correct formatting. It does unfortunately give us some overrides, it seems, but those can easily be taken away. Something like this. And uh, note that even uh, the uh, bolded character style formatting comes along uh, for the word TOC. Lastly, since we chose to have a, a link document, we could now open the Word doc again. Just give me a second. And uh, maybe we change something. Let's give it a uh, new heading. I'll just write, I don't know, new heading. And uh, we save it. And uh, we also need to close it. And uh, now we go back into InDesign. And uh, then we just go to the links panel and uh, update this. And now we're all up to date. Pretty cool, I think, considering that Word isn't an Adobe software at all. And that's all I had for this tutorial. Hope you can find some uh, useful way of implementing this yourself. Thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot. And also, if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.